Have you ever had a single digit typo cause several thousands of dollars in damage? I once typed 6,000 instead of 600, so just a single extra zero in millions of lines of code, and that was all it took to launch an 18 inch diameter impeller out of our pie jaws on an Akuma Multis. That thing sounded like a category five tornado as the blades caught the wind, then the part sucked itself out of the jaws and levitated in midair for a split second before it became the world's largest pinball. It was bouncing off the doors, way covers, chuck, and pretty much everything inside the machine enclosure. It was super exciting having my face inches away from the glass when this happened. Now this wasn't my first mistake, and it won't be my last. If you spend enough time as a machinist or programmer, you're going to have things like this happen. And anybody that says they've never scrapped a part or crashed a machine is either full of it or has never run a part. A lot of people don't have even a basic understanding of what a machinist or programmer actually does on a daily basis. It can be a very high stress job with ship dates always approaching too fast, always being rushed and asked to complete complex jobs, and half the time you feel like you need to get the job done properly. I've had several engineers and managers act like I try to make programming sound overly complicated, and they say things like, don't you just load the model into your CAM software and hit the program button? They have no idea that it literally takes thousands of variables all being absolutely perfect to make a part to spec. In a single toolpath, there may be a hundred or more variables like feed, speed, depth of cut, step over, cut direction, lead ins, tilt, lead lag, arc tolerance, smoothing settings, tool selection, tool definition, torque, power, and so much more. And that doesn't even count the variables that are more difficult to predict, like machine and fixture rigidity. Some things take years to get a good feel for. Add to that the need to understand best practices and several software platforms. You need to be very, very good in CAD and CAM, and usually several other platforms that might include verification software like Vericut or NC Simul, Microsoft Office products, PDM, shop management software, and others. One thing that really made me a better programmer and less prone to errors was mastering SolidWorks. When you can test things in a 3D environment and model every little component, it makes a big difference in visualizing what's happening in the real world. Then there's things like blueprint interpretation. Drawings for different industries are vastly different from each other. When you look at a drawing for an oil field tool versus an old drawing for an F-16's wing structure, you're blown away by the differences. You also have to know inspection tools and how and when to use each one. You have to know crystalline structures and metals. I mean, how many of you listening right now can describe the differences between austenitic, ferritic, martensitic, duplex, and precipitation hardened stainless steels? And even if you're good at everything I've just mentioned, a single typo is enough to render all of that useless. A decimal point away from perfection can mean assured destruction. When these mistakes happen, it's never convenient. But a key part of all this is understanding how easy it is to make these mistakes. It's usually not a result of being careless or lazy or bad at your job. Most machinists and programmers that I know want nothing more than to make a perfect part that passes inspection on the first piece. And when a part is scrapped or a machine is crashed, Usually no one feels worse than the guy that did it. It always sucks when your machine is the one that just went boom and 20 heads poke out from around other machines like groundhogs looking straight at you. It's important though that we try our best to mitigate these mistakes by any means we have. Checklist, verification, peer review, toolpath examination, checking tools, torquing bolts. But when you miss that one thing out of 10,000, take responsibility for what happened and fix it if possible and keep moving. And do not keep making the same mistakes over and over. I saw a question several weeks ago on our Facebook machinist group that asked the community, how many mistakes should you let a programmer make before you fire him? The first thing that I had thought was, well, were they the same mistakes every time or were they new and different? And I also saw a lot of comments from people that to me didn't seem realistic. I have seen masterful tradesmen in many industries make mistakes and I couldn't imagine what would have happened if every time they made a typo they got fired. We would have a lot less extremely skilled people on this planet for sure. To all of you listening, I hope all of your parts are first part passes, I hope all of your holes are on size, and I hope all your surface finishes look like mirrors. But if they're not, take the time to take stock of what happened and why it happened. Be proactive and make sure that you never repeat the same mistake again. And that's what will make you a great machinist. Good luck out there and I'll talk to you guys again soon.